Welcome to Glide Chat, where we give you the rundown of all things service now. Let's talk about the now, right now. Hey everybody, welcome to another Glide Chat special edition partner spotlight. Today I'm here with Bill Miller from Proven Optics. Really happy to have you here, Bill. Um, how are you doing today, Bill? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Not not too bad, not too bad. So I want to jump right into it and get to know Proven Optics a little bit more and how we work together. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, could you walk us through a little bit about Proven Optics, who you guys are, what do you guys do? Uh, absolutely. So Proven Optics was founded in 2020 after I spent probably the last uh, 15 years doing management consulting, helping companies understand what they're spending on technology, and then as they understood that spend, looking for opportunities to invest uh, more intelligently, make better decisions about how they spent their IT money, uh, communicate effectively uh, how they were spending their IT money. Uh, and there was a lot of software products on the market, but none of them really seemed to fit into what we were trying to get done. So we ended up uh, leveraging a product on the ServiceNow platform. And in late 19, ServiceNow approached us and said it would be fantastic if you guys would co-develop with us a, a product on our platform that really kind of captures what you're trying to do uh, when you go in and help organizations with their uh, IT costing. And so our first set of applications rolled out on the platform in late 2020. And uh, we now have, I think, seven applications and the rest is history. Like we've just been running ever since uh, in that direction. That, that's great. Yeah, I, I know about a few of the applications with the, the basically the, the budgeting application mm -hmm. and the, the cost analysis. Can you talk a little bit more about what those applications do, what, what they're called, what they solve? Yeah, sure. So we have a set of applications that are really focused at enabling that IT financial management practice for the IT department, but also for finance. So we kind of straddle both of those um, uh, departments within an organization. We do a budgeting app. Why do we do a budgeting app? There's a lot of budgeting opportunities out there. Like you can get budget apps from multiple sources. I think what's unique about our approach is nobody ever uh, calls an IT department and says, hey, I need a week of salary and some depreciation. Like. Every budget I've ever seen in my life has been salary, you know, uh, travel, training, hardware, software. That's how we budget. But nobody picks up the phone and says, hey, IT, I need some salary and some travel, right? They pick up the phone and they say, I need a laptop deployed. I need an application built. While that takes people, labor and salary dollars, and it does take sometimes travel to get it done. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not the way we engage with the IT department. So when we budget, we want to talk about it in the context of what we're delivering, not in the context of parts that make it up. Uh, and so that's sort of the difference on our budget app. And our cost modeling app is all about looking at how holistically IT delivers capabilities, technical capabilities to the organization. So, for example, you build an application. Well, that application rides on an infrastructure. It has a middleware. It has a network connection. And so somebody comes along from the business side and they say, well, how much does this application cost? Well, if all you talk about is that thin little software layer that sits at the top, you're missing the fact that there's a whole lot of other costs that that application drives uh, simply by being part of the uh, ecosystem within our company. Um, we split those applications, federal and non-federal. Why that? Because in the federal, government, you do a, a budgeting practice known as commitment-based accounting. It's not GAAP standard accounting. So it's a little bit different. We wanted to make sure we had a product that made sense and resonated with our government customers. And I'm happy to say, I'm, I think we're the only ones that do that, which every time we show it, the government folks are always like, what? You know what we're talking about. So uh, it's been really kind of fun that way as well. That's great. And so you're, you're built on the ServiceNow platform, yeah. was that by design that you said ServiceNow approached you for this, but yeah. do you feel that that's the um, the most amount of synergy you can have with, with other platforms? Did you look at other options when you were creating this company? Yeah. I mean, we I've been doing this for a while and I have used, I implemented, I you know, probably six or eight different 
uh, methodologies. I've done Excel spreadsheets. I've done other uh, platform agnostic um, applications. I've done standalone applications. I've done SaaS applications. All the while we were trying to help customers kind of realize this goal. But the thing about IT financial management that is unique or drives sort of a different set of need is what I really call the triangle of understanding, which is the trade-off between price, performance, and risk. And IT decisions aren't just about cost. Uh, oftentimes, organizations, when they talk about investing in uh, anything, they talk about the cost of the investment, but the ROI, the uh, non-financial dimensions, what do I get for my money that I'm putting in this investment? Well, if it's about a business practice that the company is very much aware of, People get it. They can just talk about it. But technology is one of those things where uh, it's an integral part of the company, but most of the people in the company don't really understand it. They don't understand the technical aspects of it. Um, it's complicated. It's very technical, what they say. So price performance risk is this ability to trade off the cost of something with the performance I expect to get and the risk I'm willing to take on. And risk and performance are your, your cost drivers. So why service now? If you look at that platform, what is native on that platform? Performance and risk. It's all sitting right there. So when we come in and drop our application on top of that, now I have the price and I can pull the performance and I can pull the risk. And we have an automated way to intelligently, systematically, repeatedly talk about our IT investments and the benefits they bring. And that's there's nothing else that does that out there. You are Every place else I've been trying to cobble that synergy together uh, and it just becomes really a maintenance nightmare for the organizations and service now is like it's like the easy button. Yeah, absolutely. You know, having that workflow of workflows or that you know, workflow engine for enterprise and putting proven op optics on top of it. I, I, I've seen it be very uh, powerful. So, yes, very happy you guys are uh, in that space there. Can you go a little bit deeper with ServiceNow? What modules do you interact with the most? Where is there a good fit? Um, since you need ServiceNow to operate, where do you right. normally see a tie-in? Um, it actually varies a lot. So I can talk a little bit about kind of where we see the most common use cases, but everybody's ServiceNow footprint, each organization's ServiceNow footprint is just a little bit different. And, and so, they kind of come into the ServiceNow environment, oftentimes through service level management or the help desk or the ticketing system. Uh, then they tend to expand outwards into uh, PPM, which is the, the project and portfolio management. They'll get into asset management through uh, APM, the CMDB. It's another fun one uh, that causes lots of challenges, but is interesting for a lot of organizations. And we just kind of fit in wherever they're ready to go. So when you think about that data set of price performance risk, pricing or that financial aspect, we're getting from their general ledger. So that system, we pull into ServiceNow, we bring that data on board. When it comes to performance, we're looking at where are you? What do you have available? If your CMDB is up and you like it and you're happy with the result, we can pull data straight out of that. Uh, we have a lot of organizations that use ticketing, like uh, help me understand my ticket counts, let me understand mean time to resolve, those types of things, and the cost of, of that type of activity. Projects, if you're doing PPM, we've got your portfolio, we've got your hours, we can show you the cost of projects and bring all that stuff together into a financial lens. So it really kind of depends on the organization and how their footprint is. Most of our customers have CMDB, have PPM, and they're doing something with service level management and it works out great. Yeah, it, it sounds like it's an, a great value add and you can play in different spaces and have a, a lot of opportunities to, uh, to, to slide in. Um, you talked a little bit about you do government versus non-government. Um, can you go a little bit deeper into different industries and the different problems that you're solving for? Obviously, there's the generic type of financial tracking type of, uh, of issues, yeah. but do you have any specific use cases you could talk about? Yeah, so I think what's interesting um, you know, with technology is technology is kind of industry agnostic, right? A laptop doesn't know that it's a pharmaceutical laptop or a government. Laptop. It has no idea. So uh, a server, uh, an application, they just they don't realize what industry they're in. 
what we're finding is it's not really the ability to characterize the costs that are unique to industry, but rather what's important to that particular industry and sometimes that particular organization. And bringing that information forward into a dashboard that can be used by senior management, uh, can be used by the CIO, can be used by uh, leadership within the IT organization to make decisions on different types of uh, investments they need to make or to understand what's driving cost. Examples of things that see that show up. So for government, a lot of government uh, clients are looking to solve the problem of I got an appropriation or I got an amount of money in my budget to spend. And that usually happens like 18 months before they're actually able to spend the money. Now I need to track what did I spend it on? Who did I spend it? Where's the contract? What's the commitment? Hence the commitment based accounting. And similarly, when I look at um, cost of like uh, cost modeling, the TBM model as an example, getting an understanding of how much does it cost me to deliver a capability, a secure network, an ultra secure network, uh, a laptop, uh, get that laptop to have access. So identity access management. So I can really understand the elements of my technology capabilities within the framework of what is important to me as a, an agency within the government. Um, you can compare that to our energy customers who are trying to understand the cost to produce energy. And a great example, uh, an, an oil company that we worked with, what's, how much is the cost of technology to get a, a barrel of oil out of the ground? I mean, think about, you know, I'm in Siberia or I'm in some African nation and I've got to build my own network. I've got to have satellites. I've got to have some way of tracking. And it's like all kind of GPS. It's like they've got all their little pieces and parts. And so it's really kind of tuning what is standard about technology into the unique configurations that an industry has, and then further helping them explore what is their problem set unique to their business that they're trying to manage in the near term. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to think about, you know, typically when, when I used to think proven optics and the, the budgeting and cost analysis, it was very, it's, it's always going to be SPM. It's always going to be this fractional area of the uh, of the business or these specific industries but yeah with the energy example i think you guys are able to um, find those unique use cases uh, and, and go into anything uh, yeah it yeah. uh we a hospital system like if you think about that iot so i've got all of these edge devices that are now connected to my network what is the cost of maintaining that how what's the security profile look like um, you think about an insurance company. What's it cost me to resolve a claim? Uh, what's it cost me to manage uh, an insured, like an account with an insured? It's, it's amazing to me when we get in uh, you, uh, one of our universities, right? They're actually trying to figure out how to recover costs from departments that get federal grants for research. So how do I take what I spend on technology and say, well, that was used in relationship to that research project. How do I recover my costs from that grant? Uh, so those are the kinds of things that we're citing all kinds of use cases. Again, it's under, the baseline is how much does the technology cost and who's using it? That's the baseline. But now those unique uh, needs of a particular industry or a particular business within an industry, uh, we're able to tailor to pretty quickly. Let's, um, let's talk about displacement. Yeah. When you're looking at your customer base, what percentage would you say would be uh, transitioning from one existing solution to proven optics versus we never thought about needing this before and yeah. uh, you're a good solution to get started with and we're using service now. So it's a it's a good fit. What's the percentage and what's your experience um, with what you're seeing in the market? Yeah, I think. um <laughs> There are industry sort of um, norms, so. For example, if you're in financial services, I mentioned insurance, if you're a bank, uh, if you're in a regulated industry um, like pharmaceuticals, if you're a, a state where you're getting federal money and you and you owe back legally, you owe back to the federal government accounting of how you spent the money they gave you. Those types of industries have been doing what we do for decades. Like it's nothing new. They've been around. They've tried different solutions. And what we're finding is that the pieces I talked about, that price performance risk triangle, 
is the core that really makes this whole process functionally, systemically easier to follow, easier to maintain, easier to use. Uh, so ServiceNow is a natural fit for that. And many of these organizations have ServiceNow. Many of them have used other technologies, other software products. Some of them are on spreadsheets, God love them. Um, and so they kind of know what they need and they kind of know what they want. And so it's a pretty easy conversion over. And what they love about it is the speed which they can get stood up because ServiceNow is really easy to get things rolling in. And then they can hook up all those data sets. They're on the platform. They're already sitting there. All ServiceNow tables can talk to each other with the right permissions. And we're just off to the races really quickly. There are industries that are just now waking up to the fact that they spend money on technology, which is just baffles me. But, uh, you know, they're just like technology as a spend as a percentage of their revenue has gotten to the point where senior managers is like, what are we spending money on? Um, you have a couple of interesting cyber events occur. And I always think about like the, the recent cloud strike thing. They sort of spark an interest in folks who aren't doing this today to say, we probably should be paying attention to this. So um, you kind of see those two pieces. When you go into somebody, uh, an organization that hasn't done this, it's a little bit longer because there's an education side to how do I manage technology costs in a way that's different than salary travel training hardware software that I've been doing, you know, basically my entire career. So there's a bit of a learning curve but it's not in the it's not in the software side of it because ServiceNow is pretty simple and basic and straightforward. It's not that complicated. Uh, it's really in the the uh, how do I use the software? What do I do with it? How do I interpret the results? That type of education. So we spend some time doing that. Yeah, I say it's an incredibly intuitive platform and and pretty powerful. Um, yeah especially since you're able to build an entire business and application on top of an existing business, which is kind of, kind of crazy to think about. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let's go a little bit into how glide fast and improve and work together. Sure. Uh, with us being a sole source uh, service now uh, software implementer, right? All we do is service. Now we yeah. kind of drifted into a, almost a service now adjacent or into a, if you're built on now, then we can support these applications. Yeah. What have you seen for our relationship and how that's grown um, over the past year or so with our partnership? Um, and what are some of the successes that you've been seeing? Yeah, well, I think first of all, it's been a godsend because at the end of the day, there's a unique capability that GlideFast brings to delivery, to building out projects, to getting in with customers and really helping them be successful that proven optics is years behind like we would we can't catch up to you guys so it's so it's so amazing that we can have a software product and you guys have that experience on the platform and so our software product for your team is like oh yeah click there click there like they get it there's, there's hardly any sort of training or 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 really deep sort of the challenge with learning it's not new is guess what i'm saying it's an extension of what they know and then the ability to go in and actually execute a project and do it well, um, you know, that's that's a unique set of capabilities. And we're just thrilled to have a partner that's like, yeah, we want to do that. Uh, we're not a huge company. And so it was very exciting for us. The Glidefast is like, we might be interested. And we were like, we would love for you all to come and help us do this. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think the communication between uh, us and your team and how we're able to partner together on you know, marketing events and webinars yeah. and, and the implementation side where our team's able to step in and, and help the Proven Optics team tackle those deals um, and, and shift some of the liability. Uh, I, I think it's been pretty powerful that and uh, mutu mutually beneficial uh, for both of us. Yeah, that, that's how it works, right? It's got to work for everybody. I think as we kind of watch, we've had, um, we have worked, <laughs> we've worked with other partners before, guys. and. Uh, I think what we've noticed uh, most strikingly is um, one, the level of engagement that GlidePass has with Proven Optics. Uh, the second piece is the level of engagement that GlidePass has with their customers and the level of trust that your customers have in your ability to get them where they need to go. And that's not true for everybody out there in this business. That is not the consistent case. There's unfortunately, um, um, organizations that just don't have that integrity and or that capability. 
uh, and uh, so they don't deliver like that. So what's really been amazing for us is to not only know that we've got a good partner, but that the partner we can trust and that our customers trust. And so that means that they can trust proven optics. We all benefit from that. And that's been probably my most exciting part of it is to find a partner that's like, yep, not only can we do it, but we can do it well. Absolutely. Well, Bill, it was great talking to you today. I uh, appreciate learning more about Proven Optics, how you started and, and where you're headed in our relationship. So thank you so much. And thank you for everybody joining us with our Glide Chat today. Have a My good pleasure. One. Thank you. Do you have a topic in mind that you'd like to discuss? Reach out to us at GlideFast.com and subscribe to our podcast for new episodes. Thanks for listening.